Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is the Thermal Series, where I'll be teaching you about the pyrolyzer, the centrifugal separator, and how to process bituminous sand with my Borg Power Cube. Let's talk about bituminous sand. This stuff here you'll find throughout deserts and other similar areas. You'll probably find some of it on the surface, as well as some of it may be slightly underground. Uh, but if you are able to harness a bunch of it, it can give you quite a bit of power. To give you an example, just one of these when processed can give you well over 200,000 RF. I'm starting it off with a Tinker's Workbench. You don't have to use one, but it does act as a battery and a charging station at the same time. I also will be using a bunch of redstone flux cells. Putting these around the outside makes it rather simple for it to work with. Seven is what I've got. This is probably going to be your most expensive item of the entire build, but once you've got it set up, you can also plug it in with any other power station that you have. Next, we put down the heart of this cube, and that is the centrifugal separator. This block here has some extra options going on in here. You basically put stuff in here, and if you look at the recipes, it shows you you have nine pages to choose from. It will more or less spin things out to their primary ingredients. So it will take a rose bush and turn it into a bunch of red dye. It will spin out magma cream into a slime ball and blaze powder. Or in our case, bituminous sand will be spun out into sand, bitumen, and tar. Plus a big bonus of crude oil, which is going to get you a whole bunch of fuel once processed. But of course that also needs to be powered and we have more blocks to place down. This is the input where you put the item that you want to spin. This is the output of the items that you get resulting and if there's any fluids that come out of it. Next we're going to put down the pyrolyzer, which is going to be a very key item. It doesn't use a lot of power either. When you look at the centrifugal separator, it uses up standard 20 RF per tick in processing. The pyrolyzer is one of the lowest powered items there is with 5 RF per tick, but it can also create quite a lot of power for you. It looks very similar and it functions in a similar way as the centrifugal separator. You've got an input here, which it then creates some solid outputs and some liquid outputs, possibly. Next, we're going to need some fractionating stills, probably three. You could really get away with one if you're really, really, like, good at this, but I've, I like to use three with this just because I don't want to mess around with it too much. But I put down three of them as such, making kind of a U shape, and each one is going to be processing different stuff. Uh, some of them might duplicate a little bit. So far we've got a whole bunch of power storage, and we've got a bunch of processing machines, but we have nothing generating power. Well, let's actually fix that. We're going to put down a Sterling Dynamo and two compression dynamos. Now, of course, when you place them down, they're not going to want to face the way that you want, so you're going to have to rotate them. There we go. In this case, I have them all facing down. The Tinker's workbench can have its power sucked back out by the redstone flux cells adjacent to it, so any power that this is pumping into here will be grabbed by any kind of redstone flux cell neighboring it, provided that you have the auto input or outputs enabled or disabled appropriately. So now that we've got all the main machines down that we need, let's get things going. We're going to need to connect things together. The centrifugal separator is the start. This is where you start putting in your bituminous sand. Once placed in, it'll be processed and go into machines on either side, but it will need power from below. So I recommend you set up your power a little bit as your machines get processing through stuff. Oh, also, it doesn't hurt to put about a quarter of a stack of coal in your Sterling Dynamo to get it start generating power. And of course, that power is going to go straight into that Tinker's workbench, which isn't a bad thing. You can always pull the power out. By aiming at the redstone flux cell here, I can have it output power to the centrifugal separator on top and pull power from behind it. But it's not actually going to do anything until you start turning on auto input. Once you do so, it then grabs all the power from that Tinker work table and it will start filling it into this machine, which then can be powered for all of the bituminous sand. Now usually you won't find one of these in the world, you'll find them in clumps. Often, 10 is an average amount that I've been finding them in, but you can put it in here and it will start processing. It's a very slow process. You can increase this uh, by, you know, using integral components and other augments, but just keep in mind it's using 20 RF per tick as it goes. And as it is, your Sterling Dynamo only creates 40, so don't get overzealous with the upgrades just yet. 
And here you can see we've got some of the outputs already set. We didn't get sand in this case, but that is one of the outputs that will happen. Bitumen and tar and crude oil all came out of that one piece, which is a really good result. So we're going to want to send the crude oil off to the right to be processed, and we're going to want to send the bitumen off to the left to be processed, while the tar can be sent behind it to power that sterling dynamo. Let's turn this on. We want to have it output to the right, output to the left, and output behind it. And then if you turn on auto output, it would, at the end of this cycle, automatically output these things. So as this is going to just constantly keep processing and building up more stuff, this is going to benefit us. In the meantime, let's take a look at this fractionating still on the right. This is going to get the crude oil coming in, but it is going to need power source. So let's get that set up. So any of these redstone flux cells along the bottom, any facings that are touching another cell, I more or less have it going in and out so they can exchange power as it's needed by the machines. But I only have it going output into the machine itself. If I turn this to auto input then, it should then start getting some power from the neighboring cell which it's then going to start powering the fractionating still. Yes. Now, to connect this, not just the power, but also the items. So it'll be pulling in from the back side. It'll be outputting to the right. And that's it for starters. We'll change this up as we progress, but we will need to auto input. And with that, we should get crude oil, which then will process into a multitude of things, a solid possibly, and two liquids. As you can see here, we get heavy oil and light oil, neither of which are going to be processed until there's at least 100 millibuckets of it. So this is an ongoing process. But that's not anything to worry about at the moment. Let's go to the neighboring fractionating still, turn its power source on so that it can get powered up, and we can start inputting from the left and outputting to the right. Now when it outputs this one, it's going to output a refined fuel into a compression dynamo, which is going to be processed for quite a lot of power. And again, I don't really need any ups or downs just yet, but this will be something that you're going to want to keep an eye on as you progress, uh, as there will be stops that you'll need to fix. But let's turn on the auto input so it will automatically pull in some kind of fluid. Heavy oil. When you process it, it has a 10% chance of getting tar from it. And light oil has a 20% chance of getting sulfur dust, both of which are burnable in a sterling dynamo but they don't stack in this one little slot here. So as both fluids will be fed in one at a time as they're processed, you're probably going to have to have the items being pulled out in some way, shape, or form, or exported. Now, if you want a temporary measure, you can put a chest or a barrel up on top of the fractionating still for any kind of outputs to be collected from these. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it as is so that you can see what things gather. And you can see the refined fuel has gathered in this fractionating still on the end, but it hasn't output as of yet. And as the compression dynamo doesn't have the options for auto inputting, you're going to have to push that output out with auto output enabled. There we go. We now have quite a bit of refined fuel coming in, or at least a decent amount, because if you look, one bucket of refined fuel will get you 1.5 million RF. So this is a really good fuel source, uh, but it is a finite one, as it is you're using fossil fuels. And going back over to the centrifugal separator, you can see that we've got a buildup of bitumen and tar. And we've got a bunch of outputs, but still nothing is being pushed out. So we're going to want to go to the pyrolyzer next. Now the pyrolyzer is really unique and it has multiple uses in this build. Because even when you don't have bituminous sand, you don't need to use this cube for that. You can use the pyrolyzer to process other things like coal or wood logs. And you can create creosote oil which can then be processed into a burnable fuel as well. And you can get other items like coke and tar, or just plain old charcoal, and have those burned in a sterling dynamo, creating even more fuel and power sources. But in this case, we're processing bitumen into coke and tar. So we're going to need it to input from behind it, output to the left of it, which is another fractionating still, and we're going to want to turn on auto input and you can see the bitumen came in straight away. Now, if you run into a problem where something is trying to process, but then it stops, because you don't have quite enough power built up yet, you're gonna to wanna to turn off the redstone controls in it, just because certain things are going to need to build up the amount of power that they have first, especially when you have multiple machines currently building their power reserves as well. Now, in this case, you can take the tar straight out if you've already processed your uh, bituminous sand, and you can put it directly into 
your Sterling Dynamo. In this case, I'm just going to take the tar out and give a little bit of a power boost and throw it in the Sterling Dynamo. Alright, so we've got enough power in the Pyrolyzer at this point that I can just turn it on, and it will start processing the bitumen. And the plus on this one, again, is that it's a very low power item. There we go, we got coke, we got tar, and we got heavy oil, all from bitumen, which is pretty darn good, actually. Let's go over to the fractionating still next to it, have the stuff come in on that side, out on the left side, and that's all we'll do to start. Of course, we're going to need power too. And with the power flowing into the fractionating still, I can then turn on auto input. It will grab the heavy oil, which has been building up, and it will process that into fuel, as well as more tar. And I'm going to have it start outputting directly into the Sterling Dynamo behind it with any kind of tar outputs that end up coming through. Now this is where you start noticing that there are some items starting to back up. We've got some uh, sulfur dust, we've got some bitumen, we've got coke and tar just about everywhere. Now there's multiple ways you can do this. Obviously we don't have item pipes in the mod. There is a mod called Pipes, P-I-P-E-Z, that I recommend. But otherwise, you can use vanilla alternatives. Now if you just want to set it and forget it and not worry about making as much, squeezing as much power out of this as you can, then I recommend you just have one hopper on the top and a few off on the sides here, like this. And then you just have everything output, all of the different outputs up to the top and be fed into this one Sterling Dynamo. This should be the first thing that you upgrade, is your Sterling Dynamo with uh, some kind of integral component just to increase its speed that it will process things at. And then the next thing is probably going to be your Pyrolyzer because it's going to get a whole bunch of bitumen coming into it. And as you can see, we can take the Pyrolyzer and we can just output to the top. But as you create outputs like this, these aren't going to automatically feed into these hoppers. They have to be forced, so then you need to auto-output things. This can start making things go in directions you don't want them to, and that's like bitumen could be from here in the fractionating still, just be processed straight up in a Sterling Dynamo instead of being processed in a Pyrolyzer. So this is a set it and forget it method. You don't have to go with this, but it is rather simple and should be somewhat faultless. Uh, you may need to, of course, add in more outputs as you need to. There we go, and with all of these machines outputting into the middle, this central hopper will catch anything and any other items will just be burned straight away in the Sterling Dynamo, giving you more power. Now an alternate method is instead of having this one here, the fractionating still, with its 10% chance of a bitumen coming through, you could feasibly have it fed around by putting one here and then just having it go backwards. And instead of having it output on the top, you have it output on the side and then it gets fed into the pyrolyzer with any kind of excess bitumen, which can get you a little bit of extra power for the cost of three hoppers whenever you end up getting that 10% bitumen coming through. The others, however, should be pretty standard with this kind of setup as it is. Uh, now, alternately, you could just put some storage barrels on top and have all of the uh, solids being fed in there and feed them into any kind of uh, you know, Sterling Dynamo here or elsewhere as you need to. But it is a pretty good system. Uh, I mean, you do have to start it off with some kind of power, but then once you get it going, you can get a whole lot of power stored in here. Uh, I realize the Tinker's Workbench is currently just having power fed through it. So if I take something like a magnet and I'm trying to get this charged, it should charge if you've got power running through it, but if this is not powering anything, but these are, you can also have the uh, power being fed back in just by changing the direction of the red redstone flux cells. And that pretty much creates your, uh, you know, Borg cube of power for processing bitumen. But on the plus side, you have more options with this, specifically the pyrolyzer, because if you don't have any bituminous sand nearby, you can still pop in here coal and different logs and get creosote, as well as these different solids that may come out of it, which can then be burned in a sterling dynamo. And of course, the creosote can be used in a compression dynamo just the same as regular fuel would, just not for nearly as much as refined fuel would be. But still, it is power nonetheless that is relatively easy to get. So if you really wanted to use a compression dynamo and a sterling dynamo, this might be a lot better than just throwing in a bunch of coal 
it is going to use somewhat finite resources with it being uh, coal or wood. Uh, obviously you'd need to cut the wood down or use some other machine in order to process that, but it does give you another option for creating a lot more power. And the only thing you really need to remove out of this, and that's if you don't already have like a barrel or something like that being fed automatically, the sand. You probably can uh, just pull that out as you need to from the centrifugal separator. And there you go, my little bitumous board cube of power. I hope you guys enjoyed this bit by bit. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch. Click the notification bell. Help spread the mischief. And until next time, I'll see ya.